to have care at the centre of everything we do. Care of each other, care of self, care of community, care of woodlands, care of river, care of air, care of earth, care of land. To place care right at the heart of every single interaction, that would change almost everything. With the wind, wind on, on your face, face. We, begin we begin a journey, a journey to walk together, together until, until dusk. dusk. You, you bring, bring your courage and you bring your heart. heart. On we go with our walking forest. We are walking forest. The Walking Forest project is a piece of performative action, so we want to draw attention to a very, very important cause, which is saving the environment. So we wanted to bring it in visually for people to actually see the impact of what's happening. So we're walking from dawn till dusk today and tomorrow with part of a felled tree that was cut down to make way for HS2. We've been walking through the city centre, stopping at various different places to really think in more depth. The project really aligned with all of the things that we wanted to do. And so we thought this is an amazing project. Get Coventry women standing up for what they believe in, bringing them all together and making grassroots connections. About 18 months ago, I became quite actively involved in the Stop HS2 campaign. I'd heard that the Cubbington pear tree was going to be a victim of the route that had been chosen by HS2. A tree like that would be home and host to over 2,000 species of wildlife. It was really important, really special. And for me, it was not the end, but the start. If I can do something, anything, to stop it. You have no right to take down this tree. We don't want a railway. We don't want 108 ancient woodlands to be destroyed for the sake of HS2. It's a hugely ambitious project to carry a tree through a city for two days and to take that space, which I think is vital. It's really important, especially for women, to be in public space and own that space. It feels like it's quite unique to each woman, but really at the heart of it is the impact that we as human beings are having on the ecosystem that we're part of. Walking Forest actually started in a studio with the four lead artists, myself and three others. We found ourselves really working together as collaborators, having quite different practices creatively, but we shared something in common, which was a profound sense that we had a role to play at a time of ecological climate emergency. And we got together kind of inspired by what the suffragettes had been doing and wondered what would they be doing today. We felt pretty sure that if they were around today, women like Rose Lamartine Yates, women like Lettuce Floyd, that they would be like us, really questioning how we support life on the earth and how we speak out against what's being destroyed. And at my feet, are some very small black pine saplings. And these are some of the radical sisters from a tree planted by a suffragette over a hundred years ago. The women that planted these trees had no idea that what they were fighting for was going to happen. The change they needed was going to happen. They planted them in the hope that it would. In this place, in this place, over a hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago, working class Coventry women, working class Coventry women, short slogans and notices of meetings on the pavement, short slogans and notices of meetings on the pavement. Many years ago, brave women spoke out with courage, and a suffragette, somebody called Dora Russell who was a feminist, socialist campaigner, she spoke from this spot to galvanise actions for women's social political union here. 
and she was responsible for the Women's Peace Caravan that left Edinburgh in 1958, gathering up women as they went, rather like this. The other thing we learned was that suffragettes held camps. They gathered women. They called people together to exchange their stories, their skills, but also to prepare them to speak, to be on marches. That was where the idea of holding a camp came from. We came to an in-person camp with a group of amazing women from Coventry. And really that was a chance to go on a bit of a deeper journey. Oh my God, I remember first time coming into the circle and being so inspired and going home and literally being energized and being like, yes, I want to create. It was amazing. It was such a diverse population. The youngest amongst us is just a teenager and the eldest is a 70 year old. The artist read this poem which is all about the mycelium network underneath the trees. So that's a fungal network that kind of extends from the roots of the trees for miles and miles and connects all the trees. And you have a mother tree that through the mycelium can feed her surrounding trees and protect them. I find that really like a beautiful thought that we're all connected through things that we can't see. The whole entire system, whether it's wildlife, plants, humans, we're all connected, we're all codependent. So much of the intelligence of a forest is hidden under the ground. So there's something about unearthing things, putting things into plain sight that we all know, and that's what Walking Forest is about. My passion is to do with gathering people together and creating a space where we can have conversations that can sometimes be quite difficult. I think something that really sits with me is the thought that the human race is probably one of the only species that you could take out of Earth and the world would flourish, rather than if you took out any individual animal, it would make a massive impact. That really sits with me and I try and think of that when I'm going through my daily life. What can I do that's gonna have the least impact on the environment? So we stopped and we were joined by some children who helped us to think about what we love about the natural world, what we're grateful for, and also what we're grieving for. And I thought that was such a poignant moment, a sort of really lovely intergenerational moment, and coming together with the children. Children, I want to invite you to come and pick up these stones that weigh heavy upon you, these sadnesses, and I want you to give them to the women of Walking Forest. We are going to put them into our pockets. We are going to take that from you and bear that with us on our journey. The relationships between those women started in May and it's been a real astonishing marvel to us to witness the way they have committed the time, how they've worked creatively and how rich and deep some of those friendships and working partnerships now go between them. So I've got this drawing workshop that I'm running within the procession and I just really hope that I can kind of teach people of how to see nature from a slightly different perspective. I think it's also about voice and whose voices are heard. And one of the things that Walking Forest is doing is making space for voices that have not been heard. of being a digger diver. <laughs> this is what they call somebody who climbs on the machinery when the work's going on to try and halt work. You usually get arrested at the end of it. And actually, I've had a couple of police officers when I've been arrested before, actually say, really, we're on your side. <laughs> they don't like them either, you know. The stories that are not told are the stories that have the power to change things. And if, like the sort of mycelium networks under the forest floor, if they remain hidden, then we don't understand where that regeneration comes from, where that hope comes from. And hearing those stories will inspire everybody. 
There are people all over the world dying right now of starvation, in floods, in hurricanes. Worldwide, the economic and health disparities are being borne by the poor and marginalized communities. People are beginning to read between the lines. We have one world and we all live in it. Let us fight for a world with no borders and base it on human need for the many and not greed for the few. We're not doing this because we want to carry a tree around Coventry. We're doing this because we want to take some of the campaigning that happens on social media and online out onto the street and make it tangible and visible. Yeah, what I love about this action and I think what makes it very powerful is this act of endurance that all of us women are connected in. So we're carrying this very, very heavy tree from morning till evening and it's all women carrying it so it's probably going to be a really unusual sight for people which might stop them in their tracks. We want the kids to say look at that tree what are they doing and we want to be able to help to answer that question. I think what creativity, what art, what theatre, what ritual, what performance does is that it creates a different memory of that place and that's often the place where new thoughts, ideas, feelings can come in. I think it'll be quite compelling because it's not only the sight of us carrying the tree but I think it'll also be visually very striking what we're wearing. I've kind of taken on the role of designing the pauldrons which are the sort of shoulder pads we're wearing to help carry the tree so it doesn't kind of create pressure points on our shoulders while we're carrying it. We went to places which would sell used clothing and we collected garments from them. We stuffed our pauldrons and made something cushiony from the way that we're dressed to the fact that we're carrying a tree. This is like massively sparked the curiosity of the people of Coventry. And people are really sort of paying attention, very much like a funeral procession, but perhaps one that people have never seen before, but a funeral for nature. From here, the tree is going to continue its journey onto Glasgow, to COP26, and being able to represent our city with this tree in such an important forum it's really something quite special. And what we hope to do there is be listening to and unearthing and sharing stories and also to create a space for those kind of conversations between people who aren't normally represented. I think that when we are looking at the facts and the figures, they're so overwhelming. We can't possibly take it all in. But I think what this project has helped me understand is that our hearts can. This is about our hearts. This is about how our hearts connect. We have been told that we are in competition with each other. We have been told that we are selfish, and that is not true. And we can imagine and build a better future by telling ourselves the stories of our fierce love, of our connectedness, and of our hope. So tell better stories every day. People are scared and worried, but actually there is a lot of us and we are not powerless and we can do something about it. The connections that women have made with one another, I think, have been absolutely fantastic. And I think through that we can learn a lot from each other that we'll take into our work and into the city. I think that there'll be different traces, a bit like the mycelium underground, different connections, many of which we won't know about at all of in those streets and in those places maybe the memory of what's happened is left. I think the way we all live now doesn't seem to be helping us. So a deeper connection to the natural world, finding your voice and being able to find courage to stand up for what you believe in, connecting to each other and making with our hands, which I think is a really radical act. I think all those things are beneficial to everyone. So I, I think, yeah, I would hope that there's been a really positive impact. Although this is a 10 year project for Walking Forest and we're going to be part of that and there'll be intentional planting within Coventry, what it leaves to Coventry is that legacy. So the women who we've worked with are Coventry women and they are here in the city and they are empowered and emboldened to make the next steps in their own, in their own lives and for their own city. So I think they've, that impact's been huge.